when I think about the concept of forte, I'm struck, as you might be, that there are two separate definitions. The first, forte is a noun, a thing at which someone excels. The second, an adjective, to play or to be played loudly. Well, I decided I wanted to find the connection between the two, the missing link. And since I'm an IMSA grad, I figured I'd put on my math and science hat and try and solve for F. So definition one, forte is a thing at which somebody excels. Well, what does it mean to be excellent? Excellence starts with talent. Talents are our things that we can just do without even trying, those raw skills and abilities that we have. Talent comes in many different forms and flavors, including athleticism, emotional abilities, intellectual IQ, even being able to make an awesome pie crust. One way to think about what your talents are is to think about what gets you into flow state. In flow state, we're totally engaged and focused on the present, so much so that we're even able to lose ourselves in the work. And we feel perfectly matched with the task at hand. You've got this feeling like, yeah, I've got this. In flow state, we are focused, happy and energized, confident in our ability to do what needs to get done. And I think most of us get into flow state when we use our talents because we spend more time in doing and less time in thinking about doing. In fact, it's as Johann Wolfgang von Goethe said, that the person born with the talent they are meant to use will find their greatest happiness in using it. But we know that talent isn't enough to become excellent. Excellence is the result of talent put under pressure over time. And we all know what that really means though, practice. One of Chicago's greatest sports legends, Michael Jordan, shows us exactly what it takes to become excellent. In the ESPN documentary, The Last Dance, we see that his excellence isn't the result of pure talent alone, but he became the best because he worked harder and longer than anyone else. In fact, Jordan shows us that to become excellent, we need grit. Researcher Angela Lee Duckworth defines grit as perseverance combined with passion to achieve a long-term goal. And her research shows us why this is really important. West Point cadets with higher grit scores were 60% more likely to succeed than their peers. And competitors in the National Spelling Bee succeeded not because of higher IQ scores, but because of their commitment to consistent practice. I think Stephen King said it best when he said, talent is cheaper than table salt, but what separates a talented individual from the successful one is a lot of hard work. So then, the first definition of forte roughly translates to the term T times G, where T equals talent and G equals grit. Now let's turn our attention to the second definition. Forte meaning to play or to be played loudly. Well, what does it mean for a person to live loudly? Contrary to popular belief, living loudly isn't just about taking up a lot of room or making a ton of noise. Living loudly means that we embrace our skills, our passions, and the vision for the life that we want to lead. But living loudly can also be really hard because we can face many obstacles in trying to do that. It might be hard for you to live loudly because you just don't feel ready yet. Or maybe your friends and family want something different for you or of you. Maybe you're part of a community where expectations and norms are really hard to break. Or maybe you're facing an uphill battle against systems that seem stacked against you. To live loudly is fundamentally an act of bravery. It takes more than a wish and a can-do spirit to be the navigator of your own path. To live loudly, we need courage. Courage to embrace our visions and to withstand the pressure from our friends and family 
and the weight of our own fears. Or to quote Erica Jong, everybody has talent, but what's rare is the courage to follow it to the dark places where it leads. Without question, living loudly will be challenging at times. We know what we want, but we might not have the courage to follow through. Doing is a different thing than wanting, obviously. That's why when times get tough, we need support from the people who love us and care about us. Social support comes in several different forms, including emotional support, which are those expressions of love and caring and empathy that make us feel valued. Practical support, which are tangible forms of aid and assistance, like, hey, sure, I'll drive you to your interview. Informational support, information, advice, and other kinds of you know, pieces of knowledge that would really help you get what you need. And appraisal support, feedback and reflections on who you are and what you're capable of doing. So, it's as George Bernard Shaw says, that the only service a friend can really render is to keep up your courage by holding up to your mirror in which you see a noble image of yourself. So the second definition roughly translates to the term C to the power of S, where C equals courage and S equals support. Or, as we put the whole thing together, what do we see? How are the two parts related? Here we have it. F equals T times G combined with C to the power of F. Or forte equals our talent multiplied by our grit combined with our courage which grows exponentially based on the support we receive. That's all nice and fine in mathematical terms, but what does it mean for us in our real lives? What well, means that we can achieve our personal forte when we identify our talents and we practice and refine them and put them to good use. We have the courage to follow our convictions and our dreams and that we surround ourselves with people who will support us. Now something to note, between the two terms, T and G and C to the power of S, there's an asterisk. Now I puzzled over how those two things should be related. Multiplication, addition, Maybe it's to the, you know, maybe it's squared. I don't know. And what I realized was that it depends. Those two terms will be different. The relationship will be different depending upon the unique circumstances you find yourself in. I started thinking about this concept and how all these things fit together in 2019 when I found myself getting ready to step away from work that I truly, truly believed in. Now, by all accounts, I'd figure this out. I'd spent 20 years in the nonprofit sector refining my skills and my talents. I had the courage of conviction behind me to do this work. And I had deep personal and professional networks that I knew that would support me when things got tough. And yet I found myself asking almost every single day, why is this so hard? Well, it turns out I'd really erred in making some assumptions. My true talents lay elsewhere, and that I didn't have the courage to ask myself what it would mean to make a different set of choices. What I discovered, though, when I allowed myself to venture out to ask tough questions, is what the value of Forte really is for us. When we live in our forte, we can find meaning and joy in our daily lives. Moreover, we can contribute our talents and skills to making our communities, workplaces, and societies better. And ultimately, we make progress in addressing racism, sexism, misogyny, homophobia, phobia, and all the other entrenched issues that make it tough for people every day. I get that this is a bit of a mental exercise. We're not really going to solve for F, but I do think that putting these concepts down 
into a formula can help us conceptualize what it means to live in our own personal forte. And I truly believe that when each of us can solve for F and help others in finding their own answers, we can work toward making the world a better place every day. Thank you. That was amazing. I hope we can all take something away from Shailushi's talk and find our F. All right, up next, we will be taking a quick commercial break to announce the winners of our poetry contest. <laughs> 